Here we will walk through the accounting for derivatives. On January 1st, 2020, Roper Inc. agrees to buy three kilograms of gold at $40,000 per kilogram from Golden Corp on April 1st, 2020, but does not intend to take delivery of the gold. On the day that the contract was entered into, the fair value of this forward contract was zero. The fair value of the forward subsequently fluctuated as follows. January 20th, 450, February 6th, 125, February 28th, 360, March 14th, 700. On the settlement date, the spot price of gold is $41,000 per kilogram. Assume that Roper complies with IFRS. Prepare the journal entries for the day the forward contract was signed. And then prepare the journal entries to recognize the changes in the fair value of the forward contract. Okay, so the journal entry when the contract was signed, which was January 1st, 2020, was zero. And the, the, the fair value of these contracts on the date that they're signed is always zero. And the question even specifically tells us that the fair value of this forward contract was zero on the date the contract was entered into. So A is going to say no journal entry. Okay. B is going to say prepare the journal entries to recognize the changes in the fair value of the forward contract. Okay, we're given some changes in value here. So let's start recognizing these journal entries. So the first one we've got is January 20th. And the forward, the value of the forward contract increased by $450. So we're gonna have debit derivatives. asset or liability. We often record the journal entries this way because this derivative account can flip between an asset and a liability. But at this point, this is an asset. And then we're going to have a gain on derivatives that's gonna go through our income statement. Of 450. That one's pretty simple. The first change, when we first mark this forward contract to market, it's at 450. Next, we're told on February 6th, the fair value of the forward was 125. So can we simply record debit derivatives 125, credit gain or loss for 125? Or you know, opposite way, because the fair value, we can clearly see that the fair value decreased. It went from 450 to 125. So we're definitely gonna have a debit of a loss. The question is, can we really just record the 125? And the answer is no, because what we need to have is a balance sheet or a statement of financial position view. Right now, we have the forward contract on our statement of financial position at $450. And what we need it to be at is 125. So what we need to do is say, 125, we need it to be at negative 125 as a liability. So 125 minus 450 is gonna give us a journal entry that we need to make for $325 or the difference between the two. Doesn't matter which way we go. So we know we're gonna have debit loss on derivatives through our income statement and we're gonna have credit derivatives. I personally like to put just statement of financial position here, just so we know this is our balance sheet, um, rather than always saying asset or liability, but you can definitely do either. This is gonna be our 325, because once we book 325 as a negative, to the statement of financial position account, the net of 325 and 450 is gonna give us 125, which is the fair value. Okay, so we did this one, we did this one. So February 28th, the fair value of the contract is 360. 
February 28th, fair value 360. So right now we have the contract on our statement of financial position at at this 320 at the net of these two which is the 125 so we need then now this contract to be at 360 so we're going to say to figure out what the journal entry is we're going to say 360 minus 125 and that's going to give us 235 as the net change that we need to go through our statement of financial position so we are going to have this is increasing the value of the contract because we had it at 125. Now it's going to be at 360. So we're going to have debit derivatives statement of financial position. This is our balance sheet side. And this is going to be for 235. And we're going to go credit gain on derivatives 235. Okay. So we got the 360. Now our balance sheet's at 360. And lastly, on March 14th, we're told that the value of the forward is 700. So March 14th, our value is 700. So then we're going, right now we have it at 360. So we're gonna say 700 minus 360. And that's going to give us a net change of $340 that we need to go through our statement of financial position. We can see that the value of the contract's increasing. So we're going to increase our statement of financial position for the derivative value by $340. And we're going to have a gain on derivative through our PL. 340. And let's make sure we put a statement of financial position here just so we can remember that's the asset of the liability account. Excellent. I think we've recognized all the changes in the fair value that we were provided here. So we've done A, which is no journal entry. We just looked at the journal entries to recognize the changes in the fair value of the forward contract. Again, remember, we're always making sure that our statement of financial position is this has the fair value. So it's just the change in the fair value that goes through our income statement. We really need to take that statement of financial position approach here. C says, prepare the journal entries that would be required if Roper settled the contract on a net basis on April 1st, 2020. Okay. So let's go net settlement. Net settlement means they're not going to actually take uh, possession of the gold. They're simply going to settle the contract. So What does it say here? It says up here in the question, let's look back up here. On the settlement date, the spot price of gold is 41,000 per kilogram. And our forward contract was to buy three kilograms of gold at $40,000 per kilogram. So what happened when we settled the contract? So we've got 41,000 was the price of gold minus the price we locked in at, which was 40,000. So we obviously made some money there. That's gonna give us $1,000 profit that we made. And we did this for three kilograms, which is gonna give us $3,000. So if we settle at net, then we are going to need to receive this $3,000 cash profit that we just, that we just calculated here. We're going to need to clear out our statement of financial position. And this was the last entry that we made where we marked it to market. So we're going to need to, and this is in an asset position. So we're going to need to credit derivatives statement of financial position for 700. And that's just clearing out what we already have on our statement of financial position. And the difference between what we had it recorded at on our statement of financial position and what we actually settled at is going to be an additional gain on derivatives for us. And 3000 minus 700 is gonna give us an additional gain of $2,300.
And that's what the net settlement looks like. Okay. So that takes us through C. Let's take a look at part two. Assume the same facts, except the forward contract is a futures contract that trades on a futures exchange. On January 1st, 2020, Roper is required to deposit $65 with the stockbroker as a margin. So here we said that there was no journal entry on January 1st, 2020. But of course, if we have to deposit the $65 with the stockbroker as a margin, then we would need to record an entry for that. So part two, to record the $65 that we need to deposit as a margin, it's pretty simple. It's simply a cash account. So we're gonna go debit, derivatives deposit, which is just a deposit that's gonna go against our gain or loss that uh, is actually set separate on our balance sheet um, from our gain or loss, but it's really just cash to make the stockbroker comfortable and then credit to cash. So we're actually gonna give him $65 cash, but we are gonna have it as an asset knowing that we expect to get that cash back. Okay, we did that. Prepare the journal entries, we got that. Prepare the journal entries that would be required if Roper settled the contract on a net basis on April 1st, 2020. So we did the journal entry here where we settled the contract on a net basis. And now the only thing we need to do is change this entry slightly just to recognize repayment of the margin. So we are going to have net settlement with the margin, taking it into account. We're simply gonna have debit cash. And now our cash is gonna be 3000 plus the $65 that we gave them because we are going to get that back. We're gonna clear out our derivatives on our statement of financial position in exactly the same way. Still 700. We're gonna clear out the gain on derivatives. of the 2300, we're gonna recognize that gain of 2300 for our income statement. And lastly, we are going to have credit derivatives deposit of $65. And this is just clearing out that deposit that we had recorded on our statement of financial position right here. We're just clearing out that piece. So we got back an extra $65 of cash and we cleared out the deposit. And otherwise these entries are exactly the same. This part two of this question is simply including the fact that now we've given a deposit to a stockbroker. So we've needed to record the fact that we gave them a deposit, which is just simply saying derivatives deposit on our statement of financial position and the fact that, we've that we have paid them cash. And when we net settle, we're gonna get the cash back and we're gonna clear out the deposit that we had created on our statement of financial position. And that takes us through part B.